Yeah, I worked in a barber shop. But I never considered myself a barber. I stumbled into it, or well, married into it more precisely. We're trying to expand the empire. It wasn't my establishment. Like the fellow says, I only work here. They didn't even have French uh, explorers, which the French uh, are not known The dump before. was 200 feet square, with three chairs, or stations as we call them, even though there are only two of us working. Pelts. But, but this is my point. Uh, my point is that these traders and trappers would come to this country and get the pelts and the gold ignots. Frank and Raffo, sell my brother in law, was the principal barber. And man, could he talk. There was a craze on beaver hats in Paris at the time. Now, maybe if you're 11 or 12 years old, Frank's got an interesting point of view. But sometimes it got on my nerves. Not that I complain, mind you. Like I said, he was the principal barber. Frank's father, August, they called him Guzzy, had worked the heads up in Santa Rosa for 35 years until his ticker stopped in the middle of a junior flat top. He left the shop to Frankie free and clear. And that seemed to satisfy all of Frank's ambitions, cutting the hair and chewing the fat. Me, I don't talk much. I just cut the hair. It says here that the Russians exploded Nabomb, and there's not a damn thing we can do about it. Uh huh. How do you like them apples? Now, being a barber is a lot like being a barman or a soda jerk. There's not much to it once you've learned the basic moves. For the kids, there's the butch or the hiney, the flat top, the ivy, the crew, the vanguard, the junior contour, and occasionally, the executive contour. I lived in a little bungalow on Napa Street. The place was OK, I guess. Had an electric ice box, gas hearth, and a garbage grinder built into the sink. You might say I had it made. Oh, yeah, there was one other thing. Doris kept the books at Nerdlinger's, a small department store on Main Street. Doris liked the work, accounting. She liked knowing where everything stood. And she got a 10% employee discount on whatever she wanted. Nylon stockings, makeup, and perfume. Doris and I went to church once a week. Usually Tuesday night. B nine. I twenty nine. Doris wasn't big on divine worship. And I doubt if she believed in life everlasting. She'd most likely tell you that our reward is on this earth, and bingo is probably the extent of it. Watch your card, honey. I wasn't crazy about the game, but I don't know. It made her happy. And I found the setting peaceful. Jesus, bingo. Bingo! Doris's boss, Big Dave Brewster, was married to Ann Nerdlinger, the department store heiress. Tonight, they were coming over for dinner. As Doris said, we were entertaining. Me, I don't like entertaining. How you doing, Ed? OK. Take your coat, Ann. Well, the job site has been down on Boona for something like six weeks. I got to tell you, I thought we had it tough, but we had supply. The Japs are eating bugs and grubs and thistles. Anyway, one day we up and we bust off the beach. And we find Arnie Bragg, this kid, missing on recon. The Japs had eaten the son of a bitch, if you'll pardon the, uh... Anyway, it's a scrawny, pimply kid. I mean, nothing to write home about. I mean, I never would have, you know? <laughs> So what do I say, honey? So what do I say when I don't like dinner? Come on, what do I say? I say, Arnie Bragg, again? <laughs> Arnie Bragg, again? <laughs> Were you in the service, Ed? No, Dave, I wasn't. Ed was pouring up on account of his fallen arches. Oh, man, that's tough. That's, that's tough. <laughs> yeah, I guess Doris liked all that He-Man stuff. Sometimes I had the feeling that she and Big Dave were a lot closer than they let on. 
the signs were all there, plain enough. I said I don't drink in the office. <laughs> Not that I 